Hi everyone, my name is Abiodun Agbola. I lead Derivatives Market Group here at FMDC Securities Exchange Limited. Welcome to Q Dialogue. I'm a financial market enthusiast, and Q Dialogue offers me the platform to have conversations with my colleagues and experts in the financial market regarding an area of finance that you know I hold particularly dear to my heart: financial derivatives, of course. Um, in different episodes, we would have conversations around what derivatives are, how derivatives have boosted financial markets globally, and how they can do the same in Nigeria. We'll talk about different exchange traded derivatives products, and crucially, the CCP. Yes, CCP, Central Counter Party. So together with the audience, um, I hope that you enjoy this as much as I do. I hope that you increase your understanding as much as I would, and deepen your appreciation for exchange traded derivatives markets, especially in Africa. Today, the topic before us is FMDQ Clear, a catalyst for financial stability than your financial markets. And who better to have this conversation with other than the MD of FMDQ Clear himself, in person of Mr. Ayodele Onohome. Welcome to Q Dialogue, Mr. Onohome. Thank you for having me, Yeah, You're welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Onohome has over 21 years' experience in the financial market, which spans across trading, CIB, that is corporate and investment banking, pension fund management, and financial market advisory. <coughs> With institutions such as Access Bank Limited, Chapel Hill, now to name a few. Uh, prior to joining us, he was the managing partner at 213 Capital, an Africa focused investment and risk advisory firm. But now that he's with us, in addition to his role as the MD of FMDQ Clear, he also sits on the board of a couple of subsidiaries of the Odin's company, FMDQ Group PLC. Uh, so, once again, Thank you for joining us. <coughs> Good to be here. Yeah. So at this point, we delve right into the topic. But well, hope you don't yeah. mind. I will have to take us back a bit because we are discussing FMDQ clear, you know, past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. For the sake of the audience, and for my sake actually, because I mean I only just joined FMDQ in 2019. Can you, you know, give us um, some background story as to the circumstances under which FMDQ clear was set up or incorporated? Okay. Thank you, Bjorn. Um FMDQ Clear um, evolved into a CCP, but right from the start, it started off as a, a clearing house. Okay. And if we go back into history, we would see that it really wasn't carrying out that service initially. And all of these clearing services um, came about with the advent of the OTCFX futures market. If you remember, sometime in June 2016, at the peak of the FX crisis within the market, um, FMDQ came up with a product, which was the OTCFX futures, to resolve the, the calamity within the market. And one of the things that re was required in that market setup was um, the, the clearing and settlement of obligations to and from the central bank. And mm. that was the role FMDQ clear. Then a division within the group okay. was playing, although the service of actual settlement was outsourced to NIBS. Oh, NIBS. That would be the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System. Absolutely. <coughs> okay. I would like to dig into that a little bit, but um, just for the sake of the audience, you mentioned clearing, you mentioned settlement. <laughs> These are <laughs> big words that part of me. So, so what, what would you describe clearing as and settlement? And is, is there any difference? We hear clearing and settlement okay. used as twin brothers mostly. Okay. Okay. So if, if you take a trade that occurs on the exchange, okay. Um, so two parties agree to buy or sell a particular product at an agreed time with an agreed delivery date. Okay. That delivery of product or cash is what happens on settlement. Okay. That's the end. That's the end of the whole process. So anything between the trading point and the settlement point is where the clearing activities happen. Uh, and essentially it's about aggregating and determining what sums are due to and from the parties in the trade sums whether it's cash whether it's products depending on what the product is so all of that happens from the day of trade up until the day of settlement settlement is the actual movement of consideration from party a to party b okay by consideration i believe you mean okay. <laughs> amount by consideration <laughs> okay. i mean what has been sold or bought oh okay. cash to the seller and, and security item to the buyer. To oh the buyer. And i'm see. trying to say not security it can be security it can be FX, it can be whatever market it is. Okay, that is very, very clear. So, my understanding now is in a particular trade life cycle, you can divide it up into three stages trading Absolutely. itself, execution, where it happened, um, anything from there till the last day, which Absolutely. is called settlement, and then clearing the in between. Management of the inventory. Ah, fantastic. So, beyond um, the role that FMDQ, you know, 
was better to clear now was better to play in the OTCFS futures market. Has FMDQ been playing any other role in any of uh, the markets that FMDQ organizes? CFX. Um, yeah. um, oh, okay, okay. I, I, if we, I mean, from my explanation of clearing, you'd see that in any trade transaction, it's important to carry out that role of clearing and um, eventual settlement of transactions. And beyond the OTCFX futures market, if you look at the fixed income trading, for example, the, okay. the sports market, one of the things FMDQ Clear has done, again, as a clearing house, I, I need to, to be categorical about that. Okay. As a clearing house, one of the things we, we've been able to do is to untangle the things that had led to the settlement failures in the past. So what we've seen is before we, we took on that role, for example, we had close to 50 or 49% um, settlement failures within the um, fixed income market. Okay. But with the advent of the clearing house, FMDQ Clear, playing that role, what we've been able to do is untangle um, um, those transactions and uh, as such reduce settlement failures. Now, those figures we see hovering around 4 3%. So okay. that's the significant, significant um, credibility and, and, and assurance that has been brought to the market just by playing the role of some um, a, 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 as a clearing house. Ha, thank you very <laughs> much for saying that. See, for, from a data point of view, the value had to the fixed income market seems very clear in my head. 51% or 50% settlement failure to now 3 or 4%. The, the problem is that I don't understand settlement failure okay. or <laughs> untangling. If you can you know, shed okay. more light, what does it mean to untangle? How do trades happen in that market? What have we done? You know. Okay, so so le let's do a bit of trading 101. Okay. I, what is trading? I, I sell mm -hmm. in exchange for, for cash or I buy and, and, and hope to receive products. Yes. We trade and deal today and we would settle, we could settle and, and say, oh, in two days' time, let's settle. Remember what settlement is? Exchange of consideration. Mm -hmm. Even though but agreement to buy or sell has happened sometime happened two days ago. Okay. But one of the um, key features of um, financial markets is we sell what we don't have. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. It allows us to sell what we don't have, <coughs> particularly as long as I can cover within the market. So in a situation where I have sold what I don't have, and then subsequently bought it from another counterparty, just me trading in the market, um, hitherto there would have been a failure because the system would have said, oh, he doesn't have this item, mm -hmm. he has sold, therefore um, the sale has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that were adding up into that 51, 49% um, settlement failures we were seeing. But with the CCP, or not with the CCP, now with the clearing mm -hmm. house, Clear. what we're able to do is to say, oh, hang on, he has sold what he doesn't have. But guess what? A few trades after, he bought it. So therefore, he has enough cover for what he sold. So what that does is it then um, um, organizes all of those sums, and then a, a, a predetermined amount or request is then sent to the settlement agency. Let me help you there. Thank when you I very much. When <laughs> you I can see my face. <laughs> When Thank I say you. settlement agents, now what I mean is, um, for any trade, you have people who, remember what I said, trades happen on the exchange. Yes. The clearing and determination of, of obligations happens in the clearing space, mm -hmm. and settlement is when consideration is moved. Okay, and that happens via another entity. Another, diff what we call settlement agents. Okay. okay. So where the, the consideration is cash, we go to names. Oh, okay. But remember, cash is exchanged on one leg, but securities have to be exchanged on the other on leg. the other. For the security settlement, we go to the central bank. I see. So when I talked about settlement failures, I'm talking about w either on the central bank leg, which is between the um, various S4 accounts, or on the cash, or leg. On the cash leg through NIBS. Ah. A failure could happen, NIBS says, oh, there's no Naira in the account. So that transaction fails. Even though four trades later, there was a sale that would have brought Naira ah. into the account. Okay, that makes sense to me now. I mean, just to help the audience even appreciate this better. From what you have said, you have said that our Nigerian bond market is a two T plus two settlement market. Typically. Meaning, if I trade today, typically I would expect consideration, <laughs> which I've just picked up from <laughs> you now, which is cash or item. I I'm learning, guys. Uh, will come two days time. So therefore, financial market participants or bond traders at times trade. <laughs> buy or sell what they don't have yet but they are confident that they will get say in two days time and yeah. because they don't have it yet before fmdq clear it's possible that those transactions will fail because somebody checks and says it's not there 
But well, he's going to settle on Wednesday, and he has done some other thing that will make him have it by Wednesday. So FM Liquid Clear comes to untangle such untangle transactions such. that would have tangled. Ah, okay. That that is that makes sense to me. Therefore, settlement efficiency has gone up from fifty one percent to over ninety percent. Over today. ninety. Ah, okay. Ninety seven actually. Ninety seven. So I'm sorry to have you know. I was just being humble. <laughs> Another thing I've also learned now from what you have said is that the three stages of uh, trade is trade execution, clearing, and then settlement, mm -hmm. and then different entities actually handle this. From from what I've heard, you trade execution on the exchange, clearing on FMDQ clear. And settlement, whether it, it depends on what leg, cash leg or item or securities leg, will now be NIBS or CBN or FMDQ. Okay, and that, that is very, very clear. Uh, so FMDQ Clear was set up in 2017, like I understand. Um, well, has there always been a vision for FMDQ Clear to become a central counterparty? Because I noticed during really the course of the conversation, you say CCP, CCP. <laughs> yes, FMDQ Clear is now a CCP. But, but the question is, has that always been the vision since it was set up in 2017? Well, I, I, I think um, it had always been an integral part of the vision to de-risk Nigerian financial markets. Okay. So what do I mean? Um, yes, as we begin to develop more complicated, more risky products, there's a need to de-risk that market. And it was clear from start that a, a critical factor or element of de-risking that market will be a, a central, central counterparty. Okay. But um, as you would imagine, the, the, the land space, or the space wasn't ready. I'm talking about regulations okay. and legals and all of those things were not there yet. So whilst it was a, 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 a in the vision, it was a dream, um, the landscape was not ready for it. Ah, okay. So, um, with the triggers from SEC, if you recall that December 2019 um, release, regulations that were released by the SEC around um, clearing membership CCPs and the regulations yeah, around that space. Released there, which is trading on the same day. Uh, exactly. So, with the release of those, um, that was like the, the pull of the trigger. So, that happened 2019. Come 2020, the, the review of um, Kama addressing issues around netting and bilateral um, obligations, as well as um, um, securing or ring fencing um, collateral. <laughs> okay. These are big words. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take one by one. <laughs> okay, thank you. So there you are a few much. things. There are a few. Um, okay, so let's go back. Was it in the vision? Yes. Okay. The products were coming. But the birth of those products were dependent on having a CCP. I agree. Absolutely. But the birth of a CCP couldn't happen because the legal landscape was not ready. Okay. The legal and regulatory. Okay. So S SEC was the one that pulled the first trigger, released its regulations around clearing members, the derivative trading members, and CCPs. So the FNQ clear can be registered. In, in and yeah, in okay. December 2019. And then in 2020, Kama was... was, was put it was reviewed and, and the new comma 2020 was passed okay so so i there are two issues <laughs> it has always <laughs> and i'm going to i mean we're going to get clarity together guys okay. <laughs> fmdq clear yeah, it's always been in the vision uh, of fmdq as a whole to make the market gold that is globally competitive especially operationally excellent liquid and diverse you have to de-risk <laughs> to to make the capital market or financial market generally more attractive for you know for investors to to play so that is clear yes but nothing happened from 2017 to maybe 2020 2021 when fmdq clear became a ccp the issues are in two in two in two parts legal framework was not ready regulatory framework was not ready you see that legal uh, regulatory framework i think i get it okay because if your regulator doesn't you know create um create the regulatory um, enablement for you to be registered as a CCP. Yeah. You can't just go into the market and say, oh, I'm not a CCP. Yeah. Under whose authority? So, so okay. that, that is very clear. That makes okay. sense to me. Okay. Yeah, this legal <laughs> bit, <laughs> okay. I actually do not get it. So you say company and allied matters. I think that is for incorporation of companies. Uh, okay. I did not know that it impacts financial markets so much. So wh what was missing as okay. far as the legal uh, landscape is concerned that stopped us from actually doing this. Okay, um, Kama Company and Allied Matters Act. Yeah, but there, there are areas within that act. If you go to the regions of about Section Seven Eighty One 
or uh, thereabouts. Okay. <laughs> those, are, those are the parts that are most interesting to us. Okay. Because, you know, one of the things the Act speaks to is what to do with organizations during a case of bankruptcy. Okay. Hither to, um, the, the Act had said that where a company goes bankrupt, mm -hmm. one, transactions that are entered into would have to be unwound. Okay. One. Two is that it's assets that are held with other entities. Okay. The the um I had such instances in the market back in two thousand and seven. The administrator would actually call for those assets. That's the person liquidating the person liquidating the company in the okay. case of bankruptcy, like I was speaking to. Okay. Would actually call for those assets. So you can imagine you've done a transaction. The comfort you have for that transaction is an asset you are holding. You've lent me money mm -hmm. and you're holding on to my asset as some comfort for the money you have given to me. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. And then I go bankrupt and the liquidator or the administrator comes to you and says, hey, we are doing that asset of area that you're holding, let us have it back. Okay. And you're wondering, oh, but it's securing a transaction. He says, no, let me have it back. You go and queue with the other um, creditors to IO mm -hmm. and rank pari pursue. Yeah, when we get to you, we get to you. It doesn't, doesn't get to you, it doesn't get to you. No, that's bad. So all of a sudden, <laughs> What you thought was 100% secured really isn't. So that had to be addressed in Kama. Okay. So what Kama then did is it identified some items or some transactions, and that's why I talked about the bankruptcy remoteness. And okay. said these um, item assets, these transactions are remote. Treat them separate. So they are legally protected. They're protected. So that's the ring fencing I'm talking about. So yeah. So that they are protected. So even in the case of a bankruptcy, Yes, go ahead and do what you want, but do not touch this. Okay. So those um, um, items that are protected include um, items involved in financial market transactions. Okay. So what it means, therefore, is that you cannot come back and say, oh, unwind this transaction. Okay. So that gave the credibility that was required by a CCP to be able to interpose itself. I'm avoiding <laughs> the use of the word novice. Oh. <laughs> to interpose like itself you said it, you said it, transactions. Come okay. Because remember, the CCP's, um, the credibility it brings to the market, the impetus it has to give market participants the comfort is the fact that it has, it's holding on to some security. Okay. So imagine how the CCP will be out in the cold if a party goes bankrupt and then the administrator says, hey, bring that asset. Okay. I think I'm following. But Where before, have I lost you? no, 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 you are here to lose me, but you might lose me soon. So let me arrest it here before I get lost. Okay. So, FMDQ Clear was incorporated as a clearing house. Yes. Now there is the vision of now FMDQ Clear is a CCP that will com com commence operation shortly. So, maybe I should, what is the difference between a clearing house and a CCP? Okay. Because I think it is that difference that would make because i'm asking myself okay if what i'm just doing is untangling transactions when they get tangled ah, anybody that loses his money i just said the money has gone there's nothing i can do about it okay. is there a legal difference between how a clearinghouse operates and a ccp operates that would make this provision and bankruptcy remoteness and ring fencing important to you because you do not in my head directly participate in markets uh, that's a very big question Okay, so I try, I try, I try my best <laughs> to, to break it down. Okay. So as a clearing house, remember what I said, we determine sums due to and from. Yes. And I also said something that we have reduced settlement failures to yes. about 4%. Yes. So one of the things we did with that was with technology, we're able to untangle transactions. Okay. And then reduce settlement failure. Yes. But remember, we're not parties to the transaction. So that 4% is to say, look, guys, we've tried our best. Exactly. We, we this could not happen. Um, exactly. That's that's it. But we can't do that as a CCP. Oh. As a CCP. So the role of the clearing house there is to, uh, like I said, determine sums, net sums due. That's clearing. Mm -hmm. And then passing instructions on to the settlement, settlement agents, agents, whether it's cash or securities or whatever. Mm -hmm. So as a CCP, you do that as well. But the difference is that as a CCP, you do not just determine sums due to and from. You innovate <laughs> you interpose and replace existing transactions so say for example jordan and ayo have done a trade okay okay um what the ccp does is once you've done that trade it then comes in between the both of us and replaces the counterparties 
if it becomes the seller to the buyer mm -hmm. and the buyer to the seller. So all of a sudden, a simple trade between Biodo and Ayo becomes two trades. Okay. It becomes a trade between Ayo and the CCP. Then a trade CCP between CCP yeah, and, and Biodo. Uh, and Biodo. And Biodo. Yeah. So it replaces that contract. So the contract between Biodo and Ayo is totally um, um, exterminated or, or, or it becomes non-land void and then it's replaced with two contracts. So all of a sudden, the CCP becomes the counterparty to the two transactions. Ah, I see. So it cannot fail. Does so transactions sense? can't fail anymore. Once transactions CCP cannot fail anymore. I see. It makes sense to me. And correct me if I'm wrong. So you are saying that the operations of the CCP equals the operations of the clearinghouse plus novation. A bit more than that. Ah, what is more? It, it, <laughs> it, 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 if it was just plus novation, remember transactions can fail. Yes. Normal bilateral transactions can fail. So if it is um, clearing and that is determining net sums due, and then novation, which is replacing contracts with transactions in the CCP, what if a counterparty defaults? Ah, okay. So there are some other. So the, it's, it's beyond just um, netting and aggregation and novation. So, so you're right. You're speaking already to the building blocks. First, you want to net, right? You want to novate as well. Once you've determined done novation, replacing. Remember the bilateral transactions with transactions with the CCP. With two contracts. Remember the role of the CCP is to guarantee both counterparties that come what may, your transactions will settle. Okay. So what gives the CCP the impetus? What gives us that confidence? Say, ah, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll sort you we'll out. We'll sort you out. So the other things included, which very important, speaks to margins. Okay. Speaks to margins, which you will take from parties to the transaction and all so of that. So there are other that, mechanisms, that other mechanisms essentially that important. Okay. Um, within 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 that. I, I think we would explore these risk management mechanisms in some of our other episodes. Uh, yeah. I, I find this <laughs> exciting, and we'll probably find someone from your shop to quiz Please on, on by, the subject. By all means. Oh, okay. Uh, my my <laughs> next question now is around. So where are, where are we now? Now that uh, everything is in place according to you, uh, karma, which we now understand is the legal basis for us to, you know. For lack of a better word, get that to get into the market and ensure that things things are sorted and regulatory framework is in place. So where are we with you know our journey to you know creating this this catalyst for financial market stability in, in FMDQ class CCP? Okay, um, it's interesting. It's um it's a long journey. Okay. Um, yes, you're right. The regulatory framework is in place. Kudos to the SEC. The legal framework is in place. And we're, we're happy with the house for, for putting that through. But there are other parties to this thing. Um, we're talking about market participants, the, okay. the um, critical stakeholders at, at this point. Um, so, so yes, in terms of readiness, we are ready um, to, to play that role okay. beyond just the clearing bit we're doing today. And, and, and I, I think the, the um, unleashing the power of that CCP will be seen the moment we kick off our exchange traded product. I see. Now, and, and you probably be thinking, why do I think the power or would be will be shown at that point in time? I, I tell you. So, if you look at, we spoke about spot market, right? Yes. And you you agreed with me that it's a transaction that happens today, and typically in two days time, maximum maximum settlement settle. happens. So, I mean, no matter if no matter how much you distrust me, you just need to hold your breath for two days. But as we go into the derivatives market, <laughs> it's a totally different ball game. I see. I mean, you and I can <laughs> can trade today, and we're not settling until sixty days time. We're not settling until thirty days time. And that's enough time for someone to get visa to so Canada. Precisely. <laughs> I mean, the way I'm looking at you, <laughs> I have <laughs> worried. God, I'm actually credit what you guys. You Trust know, but, but but seriously. <laughs> so if that entity to guarantee the trade is not there, trust me, that market will take off. Because even if I'm willing to take your, your risk for two days, I mean, I won't take it for 30 days. You're a good guy, but I won't take it for 30 days. <laughs> I won't take it for 60 days. Right. But do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I do understand you. Even I don't know how to feel about that. But no, 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 no. It's not about <laughs> you. It's nothing personal. <laughs> but imagine swap transactions that run for five years. Mm. If there's nobody guaranteeing the performance of those contracts, those trans People contracts probably will never not. trade. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it's part of, so where it's part of the journey for the 
launch of the exchange traded derivatives where we're saying okay you know what it's important for the for for the derivatives market and and it's when that market is launched you see the the credibility because you know it's new in the market yeah so people are yet to come yeah. to terms with with the with the with the value proposition yes it's a lot theoretical but you know the confidence the comfort it brings to market participants people are yet to appreciate to it because it's not full depth so yeah we're on that journey you know but um i i think two things i mean that's one that the one on the exchange trade that yeah and the other equally important is even the opportunity to ccp the spot market oh beyond <laughs> for lack of a better word the untangling we currently do to increase um settlement efficiency yeah we can also interpose ourselves into yeah so think about it um you're a trader in a tier one bank okay. there's a newly licensed bank you probably have a few hiccups around doing trades with them even mm. though it's going to settle in two days mm. we're going to have a few concerns about i don't have settlement line for you yeah. and all of that but one of the things we're saying is okay hang on what if we ccp the whole market and say look regardless of the counterparty whether it was issued whether it was issued a license today or it's one that's 105 years old it doesn't really matter at least you know me you know the cc it makes perfect sense so so for us sense. it's um, a two-pronged approach one is on the derivative side um, um align work with the with um, the exchange in developing that market and providing credibility to the market but secondly the existing markets of sports and repos um ccp in it and of course you know what would happen in terms of untangling we're going to yes. go from 97 to 100, 200 yeah yeah immediately yeah yeah so 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 for us that's that's what that's where we're going ah, okay so if i hear you correctly what you have said now okay yes from 2017 <laughs> we are now a ccp but we want to launch with the fmd casting trade derivatives market to show value and once there is increased appreciation for the power that a ccp brings mm. to financial stability then you know we are going to do the same thing for the sports, sports market. market and i think uh, exciting times ahead guys uh, I, I, w I would love to be a part of you know that financial market because it, it brings a lot of operational excellence liquidity as well because now people are more willing to trade I, imagine if you remember now just trading with uh, yeah, it brings liquidity as yeah. well. another thing is, is around the efficiency all of a mm -hmm. sudden you just focus on price of money yes it's not so much about the counterparty oh is he risky or is not risky Mm -hmm. It's just what is the price of 30 days money, mm -hmm. regardless of who the counterpart is. Mm -hmm. So it brings a lot of transparency as well within the market. The Perhaps the last question I would like to ask, except you know, something spins off from there, is that what does the future look like for, for FMDQ beyond uh, beyond these things that you have said? The exchange rate derivatives markets and then CCP in the spot market. Are we looking to, you know, to delve into other markets? What, what is the vision beyond this market okay for the vision for fmdq clear essentially is to be able to take its um um central central clearing um, capabilities right beyond the fmdq market okay and we're going right now as you would imagine there's a vertical model we run mm -hmm. which is clearing and and setting all transactions for our exchange yes yeah. um for event for fmdqx but but for us we want to um do some vertical diversification okay. are there other markets within the nigerian financial ecosystem. market or the ecosystem that we can provide those services for leveraging our technology leveraging our risk management expertise re leveraging resources diversify within the nigerian ecosystem as well as outside of the nigerian ecosystem i mean because don't forget our, our overall objective I I is to get that global acceptance as as a ccp and and, and for us um that only comes when we um innovate a transaction or we stand um, as guarantors to a transaction beyond the shores, the shores of, of this country and another institution will say oh yes we would accept that assurance from that entity this is truly inspiring i must say and actually ambitious <laughs> More greasy, <obviously>. oh. <laughs> well i don't recall us doing anything that isn't audacious here yeah yeah true so thank you very much this is truly inspiring i must say and i must say that the vision is quite audacious quite audacious i'm, I'm impressed but i don't want to be you right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so 
finally, I mean, what what roles have the regulators played in this journey to to CCP and then to becoming globally acceptable? What what roles do you see them playing? Okay. Um. Um. F to be honest, I think we will not be where we are today without the support and commitment from the SEC. I I I. I think they've done a fantastic job because remember it's new mm -hmm. to the market so it was a learning period for us it was also a learning period for the sec so i can imagine the challenges they would have had in trying to understand you know the things we brought before them you know the the um unending calls with them but but um i i i think they have they are um, they have a positive approach to market development mm. um, and they appreciate the impact this would have in the market and i think they have been um what's the word collaborative that's mm. the word they've mm. been quite collaborative in the development of this market um i i i dare say it's it's not going to get any easier because you know in this journey to global acceptance we cannot embark on it alone we have to take the regulators along with us mm -hmm. our regulators must understand global acceptability and and in in our journey for global acceptance so um we've worked together closely we shall continue working together closely with them and and beyond the the, the sec i mean other regulators they've they've had that their fair share of impact in, mm. in in this market central bank it's not the the engagement we've had with the central bank still on this matter is is, is um it's um almost uncountable Formally and informally, you know, because I I again, like I said, a lot of changes have to happen mm -hmm. within the market, mm -hmm. um, within the central bank as well. There's a need for for the guys in the in the banking operations to to begin to, to understand what this entity is. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, you just hear CCPC, but like, oh, what is this entity? You know, mm -hmm. so we we appreciate the 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 level of understanding. We engage them on a regular basis mm -hmm. to to bring them up to speed, and and, and I think the approach has always been, um, we're never too tired to 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 um, engage them, never too tired to educate where the need arises, you know. So I think those, particularly those two um, regulators. Th thank you very much. It fantastic. is refreshing to hear because <laughs> the goals and the future that you have painted is so big that, uh, and it's, it's actually refreshing to hear that regulatory support has been a much needed tailwind for you. Uh, so Absolutely. once again, Mr. Onomi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm sure the audience appreciates well, you. It was, well. it was nice. It was mm -hmm. nice um, having me here. Thank you very much, brother. Right. Thank you. Uh, in our subsequent episodes, like I promised during this one, we'll be talking more about you know risk management mechanisms and stuff like that. Thank you for joining. Thank you.